have you experienced, I'm sure you have, the moment when you are so creeped out by a narcissist, when you recognize the narcissistic behavior in another person and it completely turns you off and you get the ick factor where everything is just like, oh my gosh, yuck. I cannot stand to be around that person. It feels like you're disgusted. It's cringeworthy. What are some of the things that you've noticed with a narcissistic person that creates that ick factor? This is not to just badmouth people here. What we're doing here is trying to understand some of the signs, some of the traits, some of the things that happen and kind of relate to the fact that, yeah, that is icky. Because what happens is a lot of people get this ick feeling and this like total cringe worthy feeling and they ignore it. And then what happens is, of course, they continue on with the relationships with these people and you end up later on thinking, oh my gosh, I saw it so early on and I was so creeped out and it was so gross and yet I continued. So this is to help with that, you know, that awareness that, yeah, this is, if it feels icky, it probably is. I'm Lisa Colucci and I am here to help you understand and heal from and transform your life after toxic relationships with toxic people such as narcissists and others. When you are feeling that feeling around someone. It can really happen around anyone when someone's acting really like ick, right? But when you see it over and over again with a toxic person, and that's what happens is we see the patterns. It's not just they do one thing and we're like, oh, ick, and we turn away because that'd be kind of toxic of us, right? Everyone goes, everyone does something that creates a little ick now and then. I'm talking about patterns when you see it over and over and over. And let's talk about some examples in a second. But you see these patterns over and over and over again, and you kind of ignore it. That feeling of cringe, that feeling of like total disgust, wanting to turn away, the feeling inside, sometimes it's not an emotional feeling. It's a physical feeling of repulsion and disgust and turn away and 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 darting around and not wanting to make eye contact well not wanting to make eye contact because it feels really like ugh, you know not because you're uncomfortable <laughs> that's a different thing and we all get that but but really like that feeling of just totally gross that's your intuition speaking that is your inner voice that's telling you something's up here that's what we have to learn to listen to. And that's where we have to learn to, as people say, trust your gut, trust this experience, trust this feeling, even if it's with someone you've been with for a little while. And because remember that covert narcissism doesn't just rear its ugly head, right? Too quickly. It can take a while. So let's talk about some of the signs. If you want to add to the comment section, please do, because it will help other people feel validation for what they're seeing and also learn to recognize signs um, other than the red flags, the more subtle things, the little, the little things such as somebody completely changing when they're around other people. We all change a little because that's called, you know, blending in with your environment and learning to relate to others. But that that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about chameleon shifting, which is so inauthentic and clearly somebody trying to win someone over or trying to deceive someone else into believing that there's something for some gain of their own to have a controlling power play. Oh, so icky when you see that. Or someone trying to make people believe. I can remember my ex going to work and I came one time with him to, to where he worked and his persona was like an entirely different person, not just a formal version of himself. We all have the work face. Well, most of us, maybe not all of us. I try, but it's hard. Um, right? People have a professional face that they put on for work because it's a professional environment and, and you are trying to do professional things that aren't personal. And that makes sense. This was a shift from one type of person to another type of person that was so extreme that it actually made me think, is this person a psychopath? And well, guess what? <laughs> anyway, yeah. So that was one. Um, let's just say, let's catching someone in lies and watching the way they continue to lie. Isn't that icky when someone lies to your face 
and or you catch them lying about something. Oh, the worst one, lying about something I almost get because you're trying to get away with something, right? Like a narcissist lying to you about something and projecting and gaslighting. I get what they're doing. They're trying to get away with something. They're trying to you know, take control, not have to be accountable, whatever. But when they lie about something that's no big deal, like why are they even lying about that? And you catch them like they just simply can't tell the truth yuck, right? It's it's almost worse. Icky when you watch someone seeking attention. Totally fun when someone is doing it playfully and fun, whatever. Everybody wants some attention. That's okay. When it's sad when someone's doing it because they have a deep need for something. When a narcissist is seeking attention, it, it, ugh, it's like, it's so repulsive because it they're fake. And they're not, when someone is seeking attention and they are not toxic, they just want some attention. Totally okay, right? And it's just like a cute or happy version of themselves or or they need attention and they need attending to. They require or wish for attending to because they're sad. That's a natural expression of who they are. With a narcissist, it's that, again, that fakey fake person to get attention that is lying and faking in the mask that they put on. Basically, when you see the mask go on, oh, how about the look on the narcissist's face when they're angry? It's not just like an angry expression of who they are. It's a whole morphology that happens and they become the truth of who they are. Yuck, right? Or when they, uh, when a narcissist will, um, give the silent treatment. And when they're in the middle of the silent treatment and that childish jeering expression, or when they mock you and how icky that is when they mock anyone, ick. Basically, I guess all of the narcissistic traits kind of give me the ick factor, but sometimes it's more subtle than just defining the trait. Here's a, here's a clue. When you have an ick factor like that, when you have a red flag you see, when you have something like that that happens and then you dismiss it in your own mind and months go by and you have flashbacks to that moment, you're triggered, okay? And you have a flashback to that moment. You have a dream about that moment. You have experiences where you see that in a movie and you're like, oh my gosh, there it is. Listen, okay? That is your inner guide telling you over and over and over, you saw that the other day. Hello, pay attention. Get out while the getting's good, right? Do not let yourself get trauma bonded to this situation and this toxic person. Besides the obvious, somebody is overtly gaslighting or somebody is, um, it's in the way someone talks about themselves sometimes. Ooh, that's icky, icky, icky. When you meet someone and they can only talk about themselves and it spins always back to themselves in such a way that you're like, I don't even really need to be here. This person is monologuing in their own mind about themselves. And I am only here to reflect back to them about themselves. And I'm not talking about like, I'm talking about when it's a social situation and it should be reciprocal. Okay. Yeah. 